Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Click MRI, and I'd like to show you how to read an MRI of the shoulder, just to go over some anatomy and what we look for in every case. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of anatomy review. We have multiple sequences of the shoulder from different angles. This one we are looking straight on, so it look, should look pretty familiar. This is the humeral head. It's round and it rotates in the shoulder joint. Here's the humeral neck, and this is the humeral shaft. If we look on the outside here, this is the deltoid muscle coming down here, this gray structure. And subcutaneous fat, the fat beneath the skin, this patient has a really thin amount of fat beneath the skin, but it's this bright band over the top. And so we look at the shoulder joint here to see if it's round to make sure there's no spurring. And the shoulder joint is, it has a medial side, this is called the glenoid part of the scapula. And this is the humerus, and this is called the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. In this patient, there's a little dark band here. This is what we call a bone island, just an incidental little area of compact bone right there in the glenoid. Now, the glenoid is this cup that the rotator, uh, the humeral head rotates in, and the glenoid is part of this big scapula. The scapula is a big, broad bone. It goes way down here, way up here. It goes far medial. It has a component over here called the acromion process. It goes up high. It also has a component down here called the glenoid that articulates, so big, broad bone. And if we follow this acromion from the scapula over here, it will articulate with this bone. This is another bone up here. This is the clavicle. So the clavicle comes all the way from the sternum, all the way horizontally, and ends right here at the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint. So we'll look up here to see if they have arthritis or if they have a tear. You can have AC separation or AC dislocation where the ligaments will tear and will become separated. And you can have arthritis where there'll be spurring and pushing down. You can have bone erosion and marrow edema up here. So we look at the AC joint. And once we describe that, we look over here at these ligaments here. There's some other ligaments that hold the, this is called the coracoid process, another part of that scapula. Um, it has little fibers coming up here that go to the clavicle. We look at these ligaments called the coracoclavicular ligaments. People have dislocations, can tear these when they dislocate their AC joint. But those look fine. And then we'll keep on going down here to this big muscle. This is called the supraspinatus muscle. It's horizontally oriented. This is part of the rotator cuff. And it goes sideways and it comes down here and attaches way on the outside of the humerus. So again, this is part of the rotator cuff. This is one of the main muscles. It has a broad fat muscle and the central tendon is thin. And the central tendon comes down here and attaches on this flat part here, the footprint. And we look at the rotator cuff to see if the muscle or the tendon are abnormal. We look at the distance between the acromion process here and the humerus. Sometimes this is narrowed and the rotator cuff going through here will become pinched as this pushes down. And then we look for the rotator cuff on other views. So this view, we can see the top of it, but we can't see the, the front and back very well. So we're going to look at another view to see the front and back on the next uh, view here. This, however, is from the same orientation. On this view, we see the rotator cuff, but we also see something else here. This is called the labrum. So the labrum is a little black wedge, a fibrocartilaginous band that goes around the rim of this cup. So the glenoid is the cup. If we go back to this one here, we see a dark area here. At the top, we see a dark barrier here down in the bottom. These are parts of the labrum. We have another view here to see the labrum again. On this view here, the bone is bright. This is the cup, bright, and you see these dark areas on the top or bottom. This is the labrum. Now this shows up best on this view here, where we can see the labrum up top, the superior labrum, the labrum on the bottom, the inferior labrum. And you can see how the humeral head, which is round, sits deeper. If the labrum wasn't here, it would be very shallow, the articulation, there wouldn't be um, much purchase on the edges here, but with the labrum in place, the humeral head sits nice deep in there, it gives it stability. And this patient just happens to have a tear of their inferior labrum. So down here, this little dark area has a little white band of fluid. This is a torn inferior labrum. You can see at the top there's a little subtle band of brightness, but this is just cartilage going in between there. And this is fluid going into a tear. So we look at the labrum, the superior and inferior labrum, and we look on another view here to look at the anterior and posterior labrum. So this is a view where we're looking from the top down. This is the front outside and back. And this is the humeral head again, the round ball, and this is the cup it rotates in. We can see some of the rotator cuff muscles in front and back, and the rotator cuff 
has uh, muscles in the front and a black tendon that attaches here and the muscles in the back with a thin tendon that comes over here and attaches back here. So the rotator cuff can move the humeral head internally if this contracts, can move the head posteriorly if this contracts, and can move the arm out if that top muscle contracts. So that's the rotator cuff around the outside. The deltoid muscle is this big muscle out here that's very superficial. And now we're back to this joint, the glenohumeral joint, and that labrum that's torn. We can see this really well now here. This is the anterior labrum, and you can see this bright band of fluid that's white going beneath the bone and this labrum that's torn and uplifted. And then the posterior labrum is a small little thing here. It looks a little funny. That's the posterior labrum and the anterior labrum. So those are the main things we look for. And just to recap, we look for the AC joint. We look for the rotator cuff. We look for the glenohumeral joint for arthritis and marrow abnormalities. And then we'll also look finally for the, uh, at the labrum here to see if they have a labral tear. And thank you very much.